All right, so I'm going to look at two more examples of coupled systems. These are just a little more complicated. Um, so here we have a mass sitting on a table, and there's friction um, between the table and the mass, and it's connected by a light string over a pulley to another mass. So what this pulley does um, is that it redirects the force. It changes the direction of the force, but the tension that is pulling on big M to the right and the tension that is pulling up on little m, those are still the same tension t, but it just changes direction with the pulley, okay? So we've got to figure out how to find the acceleration of this system when the two uh, components are not acting in the, or moving in the same direction. So we're going to start off with a free body diagram just like we always do. So for big M, this is the free body diagram. The normal force of the table pushes up, gravity pulls down, there's a rope pulling to the right with a tension T, and there's friction which acts to the left with uh, F sub F. So that's fairly normal. Now, because this block will accelerate to the right, I'm going to call that the X direction. So the X direction is always, we always choose it as the direction of the acceleration. Now, for this mass here, the forces act in the vertical direction. Gravity pulls down MG, the tension pulls up, and since this mass accelerates downwards, for this problem, I'm going to call this direction x. So x will be the direction that it accelerates, okay? So that's the trick to solving these problems. In all cases, we make the direction that it accelerates x, and that way it never accelerates in the y direction. We don't have to worry about the components of the acceleration. All right, so we are going to apply Newton's laws to this problem, all right? So I'm going to start off by applying Newton's law to little m, that's right here, in its x direction. So the forces in the positive x direction are mg minus t equals this m times a. So it looks like this. So we're going to have mg minus t equals m times a. I can solve that for t. I can get t by itself. And if I do, I'll get mg minus ma. And so I'm just going to call that equation 1. And I'm going to go ahead and apply Newton's laws to the other um, problems. And then at the end, I'll see what I can do with the equations I have, all right? So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to apply Newton's law to this mass over here. I'm going to apply it in the y direction. So this is the x direction. So in the y direction, it's this way. And so we're going to have the normal force, that's going upwards, minus the downwards force, mg, that equals 0. So that just tells us that the normal force equals capital M times g. And I'm going to call that equation 2. We can also apply Newton's law to this problem in the x direction. So that's the next thing I'm going to do. I'm going to apply Newton's law to capital M, this mass here, in the x direction. So that means I'm going to have t to the right minus the friction force to the left, and that equals this mass times its acceleration. Now remember, the acceleration of the little mass and the acceleration of the big mass are the same because they're a coupled system. So this rope here isn't stretching and growing longer. Um, they both accelerate at the exact same rate. Okay, so here I have this equation. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to eliminate T by substituting in this equation. And of course, I know the friction force is mu times the normal force. And so I'm going to substitute this in for the normal force. So I'm going to sub in T from equation 1 and the normal force from equation 2. So here's T from equation 1. That's T right here. became that minus the mu times the normal force, and that, of course, equals ma. So I just rewrote this equation with these substitutions over here, okay? So here I have an equation, and uh, I don't know if you noticed, but t just got eliminated. t canceled. So I don't have t anymore. So this is like when we um, took a look at the entire system. There was no t, there were no internal forces. We basically built an equation here that applies to our entire system. So we're going to try to solve this for the acceleration, okay? Because we know the masses and we know the coefficient of friction. So the only thing we don't know is the acceleration. It appears here and here. So I'm going to go ahead and I don't need these parentheses. They're not grouping anything. So I'm going to bring this term to the other side. And when I do, I get ma plus little ma. I don't need these parentheses, so I'll just drop them. And then here I have an A in both of those terms. I can factor it out, so I get that. And then lastly, I can divide both sides by this quantity right here, M plus M, and that will give me my acceleration. So my acceleration is going to be Mg minus mu, capital Mg, all over the sum of the masses. 
So there's an algebraic expression for the acceleration of the system. I can then plug in my numbers and it turns out it's about 1.75 meters per second squared. All right. Um, I can then go ahead and find the tension because the second part of the question was what is the tension in the connecting string? I really don't have to do any more work. I already have an expression right here for the tension. So I'm just going to use that. I got that from just looking at um, this mass here. So it's like we're examining one of the parts. So I can plug that in. Um, I can use equation one to find the tension. It's just mg minus ma, which turns out to be 16.1 newtons. Okay. All right. So one of the things I want you to notice about this algebraic solution here is that it has a couple of special cases. So imagine what would happen if this mass right here had was zero. If this had no mass, then it would have no inertia, and it would be like this mass is just free falling, not pulling on anything, just pulling on an empty string. Okay. So if you made big M zero, this term would go away, and this term would go away, and you would have mg over m. The m's would cancel, and you would just have g. So the acceleration would be g. So in the special case that capital M is zero, this expression reduces to the acceleration of the system just being g, which makes sense. If there was no mass on the table, this would just fall at a rate of 9.8 meters per second squared. So you can look at expressions like this, especially in multiple choice exams, and you can ask which one makes sense in the special case. All right, so if you have a special case that this was zero, that should fall at 9.8 meters per second, and that equation does correctly predict that. All right, let me look at one more example. So that's an example of um, a mass on a table. Here's one where you have one of the masses on an inclined plane, okay, and it's looped over a pulley. So in the problem, you're given the masses, big M and little m, um, and we are going to assume that this thing here is going to accelerate up the ramp because big M is uh, 4 kilograms, this is 3 kilograms, it's probably going to pull it up. If it turns out we're wrong, then the acceleration will be negative which means it accelerates the other way. So you don't have to be right, you just gotta be consistent. So just pick a direction, I'm gonna assume it accelerates up the ramp. So we're gonna draw our free body diagrams just like we've been doing. This one should look familiar to you. It's a free body diagram of, of a mass on an inclined plane. There is no friction in this case, so we're not solving any friction. So the normal force pushes this way, perpendicular to the inclined plane. The tension pulls this way, Gravity goes straight down, so there's gravity. The angle between gravity and the negative y-axis is going to be theta. And it, this block is going to accelerate up the ramp. So that is going to be my x direction for this problem here. Okay, So that's why I chose x in that direction, and y has got to be perpendicular to it, so there's y. This thing looks very similar to the last problem. It's simply a uh, hanging weight. Gravity pulls down with capital MG. The tension pulls up with T. And this tension here is the same as that tension there. So we're going to do a very similar thing. We're going to apply Newton's laws to little m. That's little m right here in the y direction. So that's this way. So we have a normal force pointing up. We have a component of gravity pulling down mg cosine theta. That's got to equal zero because this does not accelerate in the up direction or the down direction. Okay. So that's uh, equation one. Let's just go ahead and keep applying Newton's laws and see what equations we get. If we apply Newton's laws to little m in the x direction, so that's this one here, the force in the positive x direction is t. And in the negative x direction, it's the component of the weight that is acting in this direction here. So that's going to be mg sine theta. So we're going to get the force in the positive x direction minus the force in the negative x direction. And of course, that equals the mass times the acceleration. Since it's little m here, we have little m here. So that's equation two. Now let's apply Newton's law to this setup right here. The force in the positive x direction is capital MG minus T. And that equals this mass, capital M, times A. We'll call that equation three. So I think you might be able to tell your way to see how to get to a solution from here. What we want to do is probably solve this for t and substitute it in there. That will eliminate t and we can solve the resulting equation for a. So if this goes a little fast, you can stop the video to examine it closer. But what I'm going to do is solve equation 2 for t and substitute it into equation 3. So when I solve equation 2 for t, here it is, it's ma 
plus the mg sine theta. That's t. I'm going to substitute that into this equation right here. So I'm going to have mg minus t, which is this, equals ma. And my plan is to solve this for a. a occurs right here and also right here. So to solve that for a, I'm going to distribute the negative here. So I'm going to have mg minus ma minus mg sine theta. I'm going to bring this term to the other side because it has an a in it. I can factor out the a now, and then I can divide by m plus m. So when I do that, I get this expression for the acceleration. So since I know capital M, I know little m, and I know theta, I can evaluate this. And there we go. Okay? We can do a very similar trick. What if little m was zero? Well, if little m was zero, this term would go away, and that term would go away, and those m's would cancel, and the acceleration would just be g, which is what you would expect. If this thing here had no mass, then there'd be no inertia, and this thing would just fall at the normal rate of gravity. Okay? Um, if you want to find the tension in the connecting string, we're simply going to go back right here to equation 2, where we solved it for t. And we'll just plug in our numbers. So to find t, we use equation 2, and it turns out to be about 23.9 newtons of force on that cable. All right, so the new thing here is just that when you have a pulley, the direction of the force changes, but the magnitude remains the same. And that allows you to set up equations and solve them simultaneously to find the acceleration of the system and the tension in the connecting cords. All right, so you've got a problem set to practice on. Um, this is a video, so you can kind of work at your own pace. Um, and this is the last thing in the unit, so we'll have the, uh, the test next. We'll have a review and then the test, but this is it for the unit. Okay? All right. Good luck. Get to work.